other communities. Um, our, our culture is unique from other communities um, because we are the only community that caters to the bottom denominator of our society. Now, let me explain what that means. Um, it means to say that not every black American is a criminal, not every black American is committing crimes, but we are unique in that we are the only people that fight and scream and demand support and justice for the people in our community that are up to no good. You would be hard pressed to find um, you know, a Jewish person who has spent five stints in prison, uh, who commits a crime and dies while committing a crime, and that the Jewish people champion and demand justice for. You will be hard pressed to find this in white America. You'll be hard pressed to find this even in Latino America. Uh, if there is a person that is spent multiple times in prison, you are not going to see a bunch of Latinos coming out um, demanding justice for this person, even if, and I want to be very clear, what I'm saying is not any defense for Derek Chauvin. I hope Derek Chauvin gets the justice that, um, that he deserves to be um, you know, implemented upon him and that the family um, of George Floyd deserves justice for the way that he, that he died. Um, but I also am not going to accept the narrative that this is the best the black community has to offer. For whatever reason, it has become fashionable over the last uh, five or six years for us to turn criminals into heroes overnight. Um, and it is something that I find to be despicable and it's something that I refuse to stand by any longer and I am not going to play a part in it no matter how much pressure comes from black liberals and black conservatives as, as some token of people wanting you to believe that this is the only way you can be black is you have to say this was wrong and that this, you know, this person was amazing. I won't do that. Uh, George Floyd was not an amazing person. Um, and as soon Candace, as- Candace, Candace, Candace. Cancel Candace Owens. How dare you speak so bad about this man? This man is dead. This man is gone. This man was taken before his time, regardless to if he was on drugs when he was arrested or if he had a quote unquote bag that fell out of his pocket, regardless to if he broke into a home with a pregnant woman and held her at gunpoint. I understand that that man did his time for his crime. He hasn't had an arrest since then. You can call me naive all you want to, to maybe think that, oh, he's still committing crimes, but he hasn't got caught yet. Sure, whatever you wanna say, the bottom line is no person deserves to die with the knee in their neck period and i can't even believe that you created this video you're creating this false narrative of it as if it's okay and you're trying to say that black people are using george floyd as a martyr of course we are who else are we going to use as a martyr finally the first time in history where there where you can say that this man there was no type of injustice done as far as to the officer he wasn't an imminent threat his legs were being held down by two other officers. He was handcuffed behind his back and he still died. What more do you want? How, how, is, this, how is this not a martyr? How is he not a martyr? This man was hand tied, laying on his stomach. What threat do you pose to an officer laying on his stomach to where you have to have your breath taken from you because he has his knee in your neck? And you sit here and you say that the black community over the past five or six years has idolized criminals. Well, let's talk about these criminals these quote-unquote criminals of what they say they are. Ahmaud Arbery, was he a criminal? Trayvon Martin, was he a criminal? Drayshawn Reed, that's kind of arguable, actually. Probably shouldn't have brought that one up, but it is what it is. The point of it all is to say that these people that you say for the past five or six years that black Americans have been criminalized, um, who are criminals that we have been putting on a high pedestal, it's for a reason, because it's injustice that's happening. If you can't see that, then you have lost touch with yourself. You have truly lost knowledge of self, and I can't even understand how or why. And then in the video, you have the nerve to bring up statistics, talking about 60% of white men who get arrested are also, wait, hold on, let me play the clip for you guys. Here are some numbers for you people that are still believing that police brutality is a real, racially motivated police brutality is a real thing. First and foremost, okay, you have a 25% higher chance as a violent white criminal of dying at the hands of a police officer than you do as a black criminal. Last year, a total of nine unarmed black, black men were killed by police officers and 19 white men were killed by police officers. For those of you that aren't good at mathematics, right? You might be thinking, oh, but Candace, white people represent 60% of the population and black people represent just 13% of the population. It doesn't matter what percentage of the population you represent. It matters what percentage of the violent criminal community you represent. And unfortunately, black community create, uh, um, commits a disproportionate amount of crime. So what is the point of this statistic? 
what is the point miss owens because i don't understand if white people make up 60 percent of the population and black people make up 13 percent of the population wouldn't it make sense that 25 percent of these violent white criminals are more likely to die being that there's more of them in the world i don't understand what you're talking about what is the point of what you brought up if it's 60 percent and 13 percent then it's really disproportionate to the 13 versus the six percent because that's damn near half of the 13 percent that is being arrested and or killed that are more likely to be killed from police officers from racially charged police officers that are unarmed you said nine nine black men died last year nine in 2019 are you kidding me are you kidding me do you really believe that number because i don't I know that there's a way to write up paperwork. You can write anything on documentation to look like anything. You can plan anything. You can say anything. You can do anything. Because you literally have a, have a shield that allows you that protection. It's called the code of blue. You should look into it. But let's talk about this other thing that you said. Because there's so much that you discussed in this video that I can't even get into. Like your statistics. That's whack. You brought out statistics from 2018. You didn't even have the time and courage to look at 2019. Because I guarantee you're wrong. Go to statistics.com, girl, and look it up. It's Of course, it's going to be disproportionate. There's more white people in the world, quote unquote, than there is black people. But we're not even talking about the brown community, the Latino community, because if they were a factor in this conversation, you wouldn't be saying anything about the 60 percent of the white violent criminals and they're 25 percent more likely to die because we haven't even touched on the Hispanic community yet. With police officers and don't say the police officers are coming around because we're black. I'm talking about violent criminals. I'm talking about murder. Forty four percent of murders. OK. You want to talk about real statistics? The, the, the police officers have way more to be fearful of in the black community than the other way around, okay? We commit, on average, a, a police officer is 18 and a half times more likely to be killed by a black person than the other way around, okay? So this entire narrative is complete smoke. And I understand what you're saying. There's definitely a disconnect between the community and the police. But what, I'm, what I don't understand is the fact that you feel like the police have something way more to be worried about as opposed to dying. That 18.5% statistic you brought out, cool, okay. I looked it up. You're right on that. That's great. I don't dispute that. But what I do dispute is that how is it that they're more likely to die from us but we're going to go to jail for that. We're going to be in jail for life, for murder, for all of that. But you can literally kill a black man, plant evidence, plant a gun, and plant all types of other stuff on him, say that you felt afraid for your life, and kill him. The matter at hand is George Floyd in the manner in which he was dead, in which he was murdered, and in which he was killed. You were getting facts and statistics confused. You were trying to lump his death in with everybody else's, and it's not the same, sweetheart. You cannot do that. Because the way that he was killed, he was unarmed. He didn't pose a threat to anyone. He was being held down. His Both of his legs were being held down with knees in the back of his knees the cops had their knees on the back of his knees while he was handcuffed on his stomach and another knee was in his neck what are you talking about so in that in that situation were they more likely 18 and a half percent to be killed that's what I want to know because what is you're talking about the statistic that you just brought up doesn't make sense to me it doesn't you're, you're losing you're losing track and you have no knowledge of self that's why you can't stay focused on the subject that's why you're trying to lump George Floyd and everything else into this whole oh it's an election year that's why all this is black versus white it's always going to be black versus white do you not know the history of your country do you not know the history of your skin tone baby girl come on you got to get it together Candace you are setting black culture back by so much and you don't even realize that you are pushing an agenda agenda that you have no business talking about no business talking about and like roland martin said you ought to be ashamed of yourself period my issue with you candace owens is the way that you went about this situation there was a platform there's a time and there's a place for you to do things and the way that you went about this situation you were completely wrong you were out of line and you were wrong and you owe the black community an apology you owe george floyd's a family an apology for disrespecting that man regardless of whatever you thought of him nobody cares about your opinion no one asked you your opinion you took it upon yourself to share your opinion and look at what you're doing you're promoting an agenda that doesn't even work for you it doesn't even even look right coming from you i swear if i close my eyes i don't see candace owens i hear tommy lauren i really hear tommy lauren and that's what you want right you talk so bad about the black lives matter movement the ncaacp aren't the ncaacp the people the very people who help you when you experience racism at your school they fought with you they stood by your side when no one else would and got you that money that money got you the platform that you're on to disrespect your own people and your own community Yo, cancel 
Candace Owens. Cancel Candace Owens just like I'm saying, Roland Martin, T.I., David Banner, uh, Dr. Umar Johnson. Are you kidding me? There are so many people out here who I know feel the same exact way. Candace, you are out of line. You have completely lost knowledge of self. You want, to, you want your platform to be so big, so bad that you're willing to sell out your own community? You know damn well when you made this video that you were out of line. Regardless of George Floyd's past, regardless if he was high on fentanyl, regardless of anything, no, at no point should he have died because of a knee in his neck, period. The point is, you can let up. Once they see he says he can't breathe, he starts crying out for his mom. Okay, you got him. Let up. Get off of him. Arrest him. He's done. He wasn't fighting you no more. How can he fight you when he's in handcuffs on his stomach? And yet you try to confuse statistics with statistics. Try saying that, oh, 25% of white men are more likely to die of violent crimes. Well, let's, I'm glad that you said that. Because what violent crime did George, did George Floyd commit? He tried to cash a, a fake $20 bill. Did he know it was fake? I don't know. Did you know? Did you know it was fake? I didn't know. Did he know? We don't know. We can't go ask him. And the fact that you even brought that up lets me know that you're a hateful and malicious person and you hate yourself. You really hate yourself. You don't know who you are. You don't know where you come from. You are a black woman of darker pigmentation. Both of your parents are black. God forbid your dad or your mother be killed by the police and she didn't quote unquote do nothing. I bet you you're going to want the black community to rally behind you now. Well, we're not rallying behind you, Candace Owens. Not until you apologize. Not until you get your mind back right because you are out here straight tripping and you are wrong for what you're doing and that whole blexit program cancel that too i cannot believe that like i i studied your platform i thought that you know okay the way that she was able to grow from policies and everything there's similar stories in that i studied your platform don't think you're big sweetie because i studied roland martin trevor noah um brandon tatum uh what's his name brandon tatum even tommy lauren uh, there's so many Angela Rye. There's so many people's platforms that I study that are black political figures And I thought you know, you can't just keep it for a black Democrat You can't just watch a black Republican you have to watch some independents too And as an independent thinker who doesn't conform to what society says that I should I'm telling you Candace You are out of line, but you can come back to the community. There's a way for you to come back I will always remain harmonic in politics. I will always let you back but acknowledge what you did was wrong number one Acknowledge the, that the Black Lives Matter movement matters, number one. Acknowledge that the NCAACP matters, number one. Acknowledge that they helped you when you had no one in your corner and no one believed what you were going through experiencing your own things of racism. I've watched your videos from back then. I've watched your, all of your videos. So don't sit here and say that the Black Lives Matter and they don't help and they're criminals and all that. Those same criminals were there for you when no one else was and now you talk bad about them. Don't ever bite the hand that feeds you. Don't ever bite the community that stood by you when no one else would. So now you, pr you produce this video. Let's see the community that's gonna stand by you. Let's, let's wait because when it comes time to it, Ask Stacey Dash. She knows what's up. So if you guys agree with what you heard, just go ahead and hit the like button, comment, and share below. I know I got a little bit emotional and passionate in this video, and someone told me that I shouldn't get so emotional, but I don't think that that's true if i feel emotional and passionate about something then it's going to show and it's going to convey i'm vulnerable right now to you guys because i just really cannot believe that someone in our own community would go this far to push someone else's agenda and if you're not from our community you're definitely not going to understand that statement that i just made and that's okay but make sure that you keep an open mind when you move forward in your life make sure that you keep an open mind when talking about black lives matter when talking about racial issues when talking about racial inequality and injustices and social injustices as well make sure that you are respectful when you talk about this issue because this is something that's deep-seated it's not just something that happened in the last 10 years it's not something like Candace Owens tries to say has been happening over the last five to eight years this has been happening for centuries this is systematic oppression the police department I'm not saying that all cops are like this. I'm not saying that all cops are bad or police departments. I'm not saying that we're good. Actually, one of my favorite quotes from the education of the Negro prior to 18, uh, 1891 by Carter G. Woodson, it says Negroes began to retrograde because they have been deprived of every elevating influence. Now, I'm not saying that we have, I'm not saying that's an excuse, but what I'm saying is let's, let's change the narrative. Let's make it, let's create a new understanding between the police and the community between black and blue relationships. 
let's 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 have some sociology courses instead of trying to defund them how about we create some sociology courses how about we create some crisis communication courses how about we create a system where it takes longer to become a cop than it does a barber let's just change the narrative let's make sure that we do that because all of candace owens video was all cool said and done but there's no solutions that are being brought up there's no anything and if i know anything about politics the only way that change is going to happen is from a policy and procedural change because before we can try to talk about everything that's going let's protest let's riot let's loot let's do whatever we're angry we're mad well we have to change the laws first right so some of us are not meant to be on the forefront some of us are not meant to be the raw raw loud voices some of us are behind the scenes doing politics reading politics watching the news 24 7 waking up out their sleep to watch the news to counteract narr rhetoric and narratives like this that Candace Owens is trying to promote. We have to call out evil and we have to stand against it. And we have to stand against any black person who is detrimental to our own community. She's not, pre she's not preaching black unity. She's not preaching knowledge of self. She's not preaching to us to be independent and formulate our own minds. But what is she doing? She's preaching that we should believe what the Republicans are saying. She's preaching that we shouldn't be Democrats. We should be Republicans. How about we be independent thinkers? How about the whole world? move to independent thinkers it's not about black lives matter anymore and i hate that she said that about george floyd and us using him as a martyr it's not about us using george floyd as mar as a martyr it's in the way that he died every person across america agrees and she said that she agrees so why make this video what exactly was the point of it this election year is not about black versus white although she's trying to tell you that it is it's not it's about what can you do for my community to help Every person, whether you're black, white, blue, brown, or yellow, should be asking this question of when they, when they go vote, of their political leader. If they can't tell you what they're planning to do to help your community, then why should they get your vote? It shouldn't be that easy. Just like Joe Biden saying you ain't black if you don't vote for him. It shouldn't be that easy. It should never be that easy. I'd rather not vote than to vote for somebody who thinks that my vote should just come easy because they said a few things that sounds good or they want to extend welfare or they want to start a black black owned business uh scholarship fund i don't care about any of that unless you can tell me how exactly you're going to do that with procedures i will not vote and i suggest you do the same and if you're not going to do the same at least go and do the research of the candidates don't just vote just because oh the democrats are not racist because clearly joe biden told you he's racist he told you to your face that if you are struggling between a vote for Donald Trump and him, you ain't black. Now, how is that man going to tell you you ain't black? And all of my people are going for, oh, he's right. It's funny. Ha <laughs> ha. It's funny. No, it's not funny, man. It's not funny. And if you guys haven't heard, check out the Joe Biden podcast on Harmony Politics. Search Harmony Politics podcast everywhere. It's available. Check it out because there's multiple times where he has actually called out the black community and said some outlandish things. And still, we vote for him. And still... We, we choose the Democratic Party. I don't know why we do, but that's just something that we do. I just have to share with you guys, family, because this was weighing on my heart heavily for the last week. And I, I really wanted to do this video a couple of days ago, but I was, you know, I just, I was upset. I've been upset about this because, man, I, I just can't believe it. Like, the, the foolishness, the coonery, the Uncle Tomness, the just, the everything about it, like, there was no reason for her to do this. There was no reason for her to do this. But I hope it got you the clout that you needed. I hope it got you the clout that you deserve. I hope that you, when you lay your head down at night, you're happy. I really genuinely do. But until you get true knowledge of self, the black community is canceling you, Candace Owens. Period. Peace.